Our next speaker is Dr. Hao Li, Associate Professor of Computer Vision and Director at Mohammed bin Zayed University for Artificial Intelligence. We will be hearing his keynote speech titled, How Can AI Unlock the Metaverse and the Future of Education? It's my pleasure to welcome Dr. Lee on stage. AI is a platform for doing the unimaginable. At NBC UAI, we're developing a lab on a chip for drug trials, radically reducing the time and expense of producing life-saving medications creating virtual teachers that speak any language and continuously optimize metaverse learning environments for all ages and abilities. Enabling truly green AI computing through smaller, faster models and algorithms that are less reliant on high-end hardware and massive infrastructures. Because what you can measure, you can change. At MBZ UAI, we're AI natives and trailblazers dedicated to solving some of humanity's greatest challenges in climate, health, and education. We partner with leading global institutions to enhance and accelerate our impact and influence. We're a magnet for change makers with the courage to disrupt. Their research drives innovation in industry, including AI operating systems, causal models, and trustworthy AI. Their work is advancing the boundaries of AI, making the impossible a reality. Our graduates found startups, invent the tech of tomorrow, and drive public and private sector innovation. With the forward thinking of UAE leadership, this investment in AI will ensure a healthier, more sustainable, more prosperous tomorrow. All right. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the host here for inviting me to speak uh, at this uh, great event. Uh, my name is Hao Li. I'm an uh, associate professor of computer vision at the uh, Mohammed bin Zayed uh, University of Artificial Intelligence, also the director of a new research center called the Metaverse Center. And uh, I'm also CEO and co-founder of a startup called uh, Pinscreen. So today I'm here to talk about a really interesting topic. It's about how AI can unlock the metaverse and the future of education. So let me dive right in and explain what exactly is the metaverse. All right, so the metaverse, I've had the chance to work with one of the uh, VR pioneers um, called uh, Jaron Lanier, he's from uh, Microsoft. And uh, what we define as the metaverse is a simulation often using VR and AR that is always on and al allowing arbitrary people anywhere in the world to basically share an experience so that it can be in the same place. So very simply think about a internet where people can have spatial computing using AR and VR and something that works at scale. So why are we even interested in the metaverse and why do we need that? Well, you know, anyone here in the room who's wearing glasses, it allows you to see better. So with AR, we want to achieve the same thing, to see better and to have a better experience. The only thing is that with AR, we have the capability to allow humans to have superhuman capabilities. And using technologies like virtual reality, we can actually enhance training and simulation. So what we think about here is how we can actually change the way of education, right? So here is one of the key capabilities that we're thinking of. This is a concept video from Microsoft for their product HoloLens. And the idea here is that we can enable teleportation instead of physical transportation. And imagine I can teleport myself here without being actually here. Imagine you can take a class from someone without actually go geographically go to that place, but you can actually teleport there. You can teach to tens of thousands of people without being in a physical place. You can experience things from other places using this form of technology. And in addition to that, one thing that we also think that, that uh, it's really important is that it's not just there to actually recreate a simulation, but we also have the possibility here to bring people back to life that aren't even here, right? So this is an interesting work that we've done 
by re-enacting re uh, Winston Churchill, right? So the only data that we use is this archive footage that you see on the upper right. And we were able to clone his voice and his likeness in high fidelity. Now, let me play this. But it was clear that without the Americans in the war, there was no hope of ultimate victory. Now imagine if you can actually use this technology to digitize anyone you want. You can bring back to life Richard Feynman, right? So I'm going to show you some examples of that, some early work we're doing. But one of the key aspects of the metaverse is you want to bring back people to life and you want to enter the metaverse yourself. So the key aspect here is enable telepresence and populating the metaverse. So what are the options here? You can use technologies like volumetric capture so that you can actually digitize your entire body and have people communicate with you. The only problem is that with the technologies out there, you need a lot of 3D scanning technologies around the person, so you need a capture studio. So one of the works that we've done is trying to democratize the process and use AI to develop a software that can actually imagine how an entire person looks like. This technology only uses a single webcam, $100 webcam, and it can digitize the entire person in 3D. So the way it works is that we train with a lot of 3D data, high fidelity ones, for a 3D deep learning uh, network to basically generate this in real time. The only problem though, is that this is only suitable for one-way communication because whoever is wearing an AR headset is unable to see the other person underneath. So it's hard to get a face-to-face -face communication using that kind of technology. So here's an example of what um, the company Meta, or formerly known as Facebook, is working on. This is a technology called uh, Avatar Codec. And the idea is basically to build a high fidelity digital human, and people can actually use VR headsets to communicate face to face. Now, that's an ideal technology for people to communicate immersively. The only problem is that it takes one or two weeks to digitize an entire person and not a lot of processing. So first of all, you need a million dollar capture setting to digitize a single avatar. And um, the second problem is you need to process a ton of video materials, right? It will take weeks. So you can see the obvious problem. If you look at what Mark Zuckerberg is still showing to, uh, you know, to the media these days, it's, it still looks like this. And that's, why, that's one reason why the metaverse isn't really taking off and it's not attracting um, the consumers, right? First of all, using the headsets we have nowadays, we can't really have, um, we can't have that kind of quality that you've seen before, even though on the research side, we're really pushing the development of these kind of things. So the problem is Avatar still looks like video game characters, and that's one of the problems that we're trying to solve. The way we're trying to solve that, our approach here is to use generative AI, and that's what my uh, research group is actually working at, MBZU AI. So let's take a step back. How does it work? Well, first of all, you've seen probably a lot of examples so far where people use deep neural networks to recognize things in the wild, right? But what if we turn the deep neural network around and make it generate content instead of just recognizing things? That's what we call generative AI. Here's an example of a work from NVIDIA where they generate two-dimensional images from just random noise. It's a deep ne neural network that has been trained with a lot, a lot of data of human faces, and it can basically generate a new person that, that doesn't exist. Now, the problem is this is only two-dimensional. So my research group has been working on how do we digitize three-dimensional human faces from arbitrary input images. So the idea is that you can take a photo of yourself, create your 3D avatar that is photoreal, reinsert that, into any virtual environment. So that's one important step to enter the metaverse. So here's an example of the process, right? So you can basically take a photo of yourself, you wait half a minute, it generates everything on the cloud, and then you get your own personalized 3D avatar that you can use for telepresence or any kind of metaverse application. So imagine we can have a classroom where everyone can easily create their own avatar and have the ability to interact with each other. Here's an example where we're using this kind of technology for applications such as virtual try-on, right? So this is using an, an SDK that we've developed. 
So the way it works is that people take their own photo and um, you can customize your entire body. You can specify uh, your height, your weight. It's using this information to build a custom body shape of your body. And then the machine learning system simulates a clothing that would match your uh, body, right? So not only for metaverse applications, but potentially also for retail, right? So instead of doing um, uh, shopping by going to the physical store, you can actually do everything online. You have an app, you can simulate everything, and you can see how your body looks like in three dimension, right? So here you can see after um, a minute of computation, you get this high fidelity three dimensional view of your body and you can simulate how you look like. This can be applied not only to human, but to technically any arbitrary objects. So this is something that we're also launching with my startup. So you'll basically be able to go to avatarneo.com and then be able to try this out for yourself. So still, when you want to bring back avatars to life, they typically have a face that still has a little bit of this uncanny valley effect. They still look a little bit like video games. So we developed a technology to make them look photo real. Again, this is using a technology called generative AI that allows you to generate the person on the right using only a couple of minutes of footages. So what does that technically mean? It means that we can actually reenact people. We can alter what people say in a video in order to generate new forms of content. So one example here, and um, this is what uh, you know, many people call deep fakes, um, shows how we can apply this technology to recreate another person. This is an example of uh, former president of Brazil, uh, Jair Bolsonaro. On the right, we have his double, and on the left, we basically have his um, sort of face replaced avatar, right? So the only thing we needed was only a couple of videos online and we can basically turn his face into another person in real time. That's something that we have demonstrated uh, for the first time at uh, Davos, at the World Economic Forum, how we can instantly generate another person from your own face, um, you know, without any, any pre-training, right? So that was uh, groundbreaking uh, back then. And here you can see you can turn our engineers into DiCaprio, you can turn him into whoever you want. So. What are the positive applications, since you can imagine how this can be used for problems such as disinformation? So we've been exploring new avenues, new types of applications, and one of them is language translation. Imagine you can actually change what people say in a different language and have perfect visual dubbing. So this is um, the first movie um, that we've translated. Uh, this is something we've developed last year. Uh, it's a movie called The Champion. Uh, it was bought by Netflix and was uh, in the top 10 for a couple of weeks. And um, what we've done here is basically the entire movie that's speaking German and Polish was translated to speak in English. Ich habe gelesen, dass Boxen wie Schachspielen ist. Rudi, ab ins Bett. I've read that boxing is like playing chess. Rudi. Off to bed. I've read that boxing is like playing chess. Rudy, off to bed. Right? So I think this can really highly impact the future of education because imagine if you have online courses, you can make me speak, talk in hundreds of languages without any problems, right? You can at scale generate the footage of myself speaking any language that you want. So this is another form of having accessible content creation. First of all, um, <clears throat> the future of education using these immersive technologies could look like this, right? People who basically create, use an avatar of themselves, have the ability to teleport themselves anywhere they want, right? So this is one big area for education. Imagine you can use the power of new la large language models such as ChatGBT to basically empower digital avatars. So instead of actually having a lecture from a real person, you can obviously have a lecture with a completely digitized person. So one problem here that we still need to solve is an efficient way and a robust way to basically customize these kind of uh, chat GPT models. And those lightweight models are one potential directions to go, right? This would allow you to have 
real-time two-way interactions between a real person, the student, and a teacher that is completely powered by AI. And one thing that I was mentioning before, what if you can reenact public figures, famous scientists, and have a real conversation with them, not just watching a video that was generated, um, you know, for just for uh, watching, but you can literally interact in real time. So this is an early work uh, that we're doing uh, from a single photo of Richard Feynman. Um, one of our students here is actually reenacting him in real time, right? So this is not just controlling the face like I was showing you before, but it's basically using generative AI to generate the entire body from that just single photo. So where this is going is that we're trying to build a system where we can take partial data, partial knowledge that exists out there, uh, what people have been saying, what their voices are, what their photos look like, or even video footages, and reconstruct basically a digital person so that we can actually have a real true to life interaction with them. So generative AI in general is great for a lot of things. Uh, for example, for creative stuff. So people are exploring this uh, a lot for explorative design purposes. You can see that these are images that are purely generated by AI. So it looks entirely photoreal. When you look closely, there might be weird things like, um, you know, people with like six fingers and stuff like that. Um, but what's really important is that you shouldn't believe everything you see because those type of technologies can also be weaponized for uh, evil purposes. Also, don't believe everything that you read. Um, people also get, you know, very crazy, especially when there's a hype and a new technology. Uh, for example, creating an entire movie, um, you know, using generative AI, I think there's a long way to get there. So we have to work closely with research scientists to understand what the limits are. But on the other hand, it's pretty impressive. Here's an interesting advertisement. It's a beer advertisement that was generated entirely using AI. So let me see if I can play that again. Sorry, I think it's... Just playing the last video. So that was a beer advertisement that uh, is a video that's entirely generated uh, using uh, technologies like generative AI. So let me just play that. And uh, sorry, it's a little bit loud. All right, we can turn down the sound. So the theme of Joe even this Joe roll me. This this is the role I am asking. See what's in the skin. The girl where there's an issue. What problem is? I'll bear that on your whole forehead. Well. At dot to play to the hills dot dominate and they hold dot come as a big old dot on a state hills dot on a state hills and I'm as big old dot my man and they don't play you made on dot to the rate on that song of the theme all right thank you so much